This right here is Madeline, the protagonist of Platformer, Celeste. And this is Arthur Morgan, the main character of Red Dead Redemption 2. At first it might not seem like these two have anything in common, but there's one huge thing connecting both of these characters. You, the player, the person behind the screen, the one playing the game. Because they are both playable characters. Every move they make, outside of certain cutscenes, is dictated by you. Now let's say we took a square, gave it the ability to move, and give the controls to someone. I don't think they would be thrilled to play this game, because it's boring. But what if we, without changing the gameplay, gave a bit of personality to our square? He is now named Bob, and his biggest desire in life is to move left. Let's also give him a hat, just because we can. It still isn't good, but players would be more interested in playing it, even though it's the exact same boring game. No, this isn't a good example at all, and I haven't conducted or read any studies to back this up, but its purpose is to show how important a player character can be to the enjoyment of a game. So being able to design a good character is essential to making more enjoyable games, and that's why in this devlog I'm going to learn how to make a good playable character. Right, so the first thing we need to decide is what type of game we are going to make. Because platformers, top-down games, first-person games, third-person games and isometric games all have completely different types of players, animations and art. And we can't make players for all of them, that would just take too much time, so we have to choose which one we want to make. And after thinking about this choice for a little bit, I decided to go with a platformer type game, for the simple reason that I'm most likely to choose it for my project. Right, so with our game type chosen, and our objective pretty clear, it's time to start working. The first thing I did was create a square that acts as a placeholder until we make the art. This allows us to start programming without having to worry about it looking good. Then I just wrote a really simple script, giving us the ability to move the square sideways, and 15 minutes of coding a ground check later, we can now also jump. Normally I would stop here, but I was in a programming mood, and thus I continued working on some extra features. For example, we now have Coyote time in our game, so whenever you get to the edge of a platform, instead of immediately taking the jump away, we give a couple of extra frames in which you can still jump. And speaking of jumping, I also created a double jump ability, which means that whenever you leave the ground, you get an extra jump which you can use in the air. So with the basic movement done, it's time to start working on our player character. The first thing I did was try to design the silhouette of our character, which wasn't that easy, but after a few attempts it looks pretty decent, and I could start colouring it. I went beige for the skin tone, brown for the hair, green for the shirt, and blue for the overalls. Because I haven't mentioned it yet, but Dave here, which is the name I'm going to give him, is a carrot farmer. And if you want to know why, this video was originally supposed to be about two different games, one platformer and one top-down farming simulator, but I decided to ditch the second project after a couple of days. However, Dave, who was the player character in both games, stayed the same. So with that background information behind us, Dave is now done, and looking incredible. But after putting him in the game, it was clear he was in dire need of a walking animation. So after about an hour of animating hair bouncing around, we now have an awesome walking animation, which might be one of my best ever. And around two hours later, we now also have an idol, jumping, and falling animation which are all relatively simple, but the hair makes it look really dynamic. Right, so our game currently looks like this, and I gotta say I'm really happy with how these animations turned out. They are by far my favourite animations I've ever made. Okay, so with our player all done, the time has come to start working on the environment of the game. The first thing I did was create a tile set for the floor, with grass on top, different layers of dirt below it, and eventually rock leading to a dark void. And this actually took me quite a bit of time, but after it was done, it was looking pretty good. But when I implemented it into the game, I realised it was way too detailed and just didn't quite fit the feel of the game I was going for. So I went back to drawing, this time going a lot more simple and minimalistic. I did use the same colours, but every other detail was removed, and I think I might actually prefer this version even when not in the game. 
I also created a couple of smaller versions for single tyre platforms and I think it worked really well. After doing that it was time to import all the assets into the game and draw a little scene for our player to walk around in. I think it turned out pretty good, although it's definitely not the best level design I've seen, especially since the player always hits their head if they jump whilst on this platform. But the art looks incredible, so it doesn't really matter. This video isn't about level design. Anyway, it was time to finally get rid of the awful white background that had been bothering me for a while. So I created this light blue sky with little white clouds floating around in it, which I think looks amazing. It just gives so much more atmosphere to our game and makes the platforms look alive somehow. Okay, so now I want to work on the last little detail our game needs to feel complete. Carrots because they were everywhere in the farming simulator for which I designed the character, but they're nowhere to be seen in this game. So I created this little sprite of a fresh looking carrot and gave it a simple up and down moving animation. Then I simply imported them into the game, wrote a simple script to make them destroy themselves if they hit the player, and our game is officially done. This was a really fun project to work on. I got to improve my animation skills quite a lot, and creating a character that feels good to control was a challenge, but something I really needed to learn. It's a shame the other project didn't work as well as this one, but I also think that leaving that one behind and focusing all my attention on the platformer really paid off. Anyway, if you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up, and if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe, and I will see you in the next devlog. Bye.